Now that you have tested your pre-existing knowledge of redlining, let's learn a little bit more about this practice that has drastically changed the way people in the United States have received their education for generations. Redlining is systematic denial of resources to certain areas, often racially associated communities, either directly or through selective raising of prices. This policy also banned minorities from purchasing homes in white neighborhoods. Many people think since this was an issue that occurred well over 50 years ago today that it doesn't matter today or that it does not hold as much relevance as it used to. However, when we examine the data, we realize that this is far from the truth. The Fair Housing Act of 1968 intended to protect the buyer or renter of a dwelling from seller or landlord discrimination. However, despite the passage of this act, many people of color still suffer from consequences of redlining today, including struggles experienced in the past in regards to home security, attainment of a quality education, and an upstanding financial status. Redlining began when bankers drew lines on maps specifying places where banks should not invest. By refusing to give loans to minorities, these banks were forcing families to purchase homes in low-funded school districts. These pictures are an example of how race and ethnicity are divided up among schools. The picture on the left rates schools 1 through 10, with 1 being an extremely poor school that lacks major resources, funds, and qualified teachers, and 10 being the best school for a child to receive the most out of their education. The map on the right shows the racial demographic of Chicago. Blue represents the white population, green represents the African American population, orange indicates the Latino population, and red represents the Asian population. As you can see, white neighborhoods have incorporated the highest rated schools, while neighborhoods consisting of mostly colored people contain the lower ranked schools. The children in these families that experience effects of redlining suffer great consequences to their education due to factors beyond their control, such as their parents' economic status or their own racial and ethnic background. The students who grew up attending underfunded schools are the students who actually need the most funding and the most resources. However, schools with limited funding cannot afford to pay teachers as much. This results in the inability for these schools to hire qualified teachers. Unfortunately, these negative educational experiences are nothing new to students of color. Historically, communities of color have accumulated historical, social, political, and moral debts over time. This education debt has affected the way in which people of color experience education and can come in the form of anything from discriminatory legislation to negative views mainstream society holds about a certain group. Specifically, urban schools have accumulated a large economic debt, which can be defined as funding disparities between urban and suburban schools. Impacts of this economic debt can be seen in cities nationwide, but nowhere is it bigger than in Illinois. According to a 2018 report from the Education Trust, Illinois is the most regressive state in the country regarding funding disparities between urban and suburban schools. The report stated that Illinois education funding system provides 78 cents to a low-income student for every dollar spent on a non-low-income student and remains the most regressive system in the nation. To give these numbers some context, that means that for a school district of 5,000 students, this sold us to a $5 million shortchanging for our students who already have less. So what can you do? You can help limit the effects of redlining by doing simple tasks in different areas. You can join mentorship programs like the Boys and Girls Club, offering tut tutoring services to the students who are not given that opportunity, and spread the word about programs that offer supplemental classes like music and art. By being conscious of redlining and the effects it holds today, you can help spread awareness of the large disparities within our education system.